Thank you, everybody. We got a little bit of a preview of this from yesterday's immunotherapy sessions, and so I'm going to talk to you about an exciting new trial uh, combining immunotherapy with focused ultrasound. And the moderator of the last session set us up perfectly with the idea of uh, a subtotal uh, uh, tumor ablation uh, being a, a nice setup for the immunologic environment for uh, uh, setting up uh, distant responses. Uh, since we presented this yesterday, I'll skip over the fact that we already know that abscopal or, or distant uh, responses away from uh, treated sites has been well reported uh, and is occasionally seen in breast cancer for ablations alone. It's also been well reported that uh, tumor ablations can increase tumor infiltrating lymphocytes and pdl one expression. That sort of preclinical data was what we took to the FDA as well as funding organizations to justify a rationale for a combinatorial, first in human combinatorial uh, therapy in breast cancer for focus ultrasound plus PD-1 checkpoint inhibitor pembrolizumab. So I'm going to tell you about an ongoing clinical trial. Uh, we're about halfway done with it. Uh, our subjects are anyone with metastatic breast cancer and a, a lesion remaining in the breast or axilla that is accessible to our focused ultrasound. Um, at least one prior line of therapy, you'll see that they're pretty heavily pretreated patients. Uh, it has to be at least five millimeters from the skin and 10 millimeters away from rib, and it must be nine millimeters in height since that's the height of our ablation zone. Uh, good performance status and organ function and no immunodeficiencies uh, or ongoing active infections since those are things that uh, may cause problems with our checkpoint inhibitor. Um, active metast uh, brain metastases, uh, if it's treated and stable, it's acceptable. Um, and uh, no prior checkpoint inhibitor therapies. Here's the schema we ended up with in order to be able to analyze carefully in the tumor microenvironment. We wanted to see what happened with focused ultrasound ablation alone, what happens with checkpoint inhibitor alone in an ablated zone, and then what happens in combinations. So that gave us two arms, one where we did the HIFU first and then uh, gave pembrolizumab, the checkpoint inhibitor, and a second arm where we gave the pembrolizumab first, then performed the focused ultrasound. And you can see there's multiple biopsies as well as uh, blood samples and, of course, CT scans to look for uh, responses at the metastatic sites of disease. The primary hypothesis is what I just suggested, that we would hope to see some uh, CD8-mediated immune changes at distant, non-ablated sites of disease. Uh, secondarily, we want to see what's happening to the T cells, myeloid, dendritic cells in the microenvironment of the ablated tumor cavity, and we also want to see what's happening in the bloodstream. So uh, we gave pembrolizumab per the standard uh, FDA-approved flat dose of 200 milligrams intravenously. Uh, we used the echo pulse device from Theraclion. Uh, powers range from 35 to 48 watts. Uh, the skin and uh, area above the tumor were uh, anesthetized with a little bit of local lidocaine to minimize discomfort. This was well tolerated. Uh, we outlined our target lesions in three dimensions uh, on the ultrasound image. Uh, and then, uh, as was alluded to, we selected up to 50% of the tumor volume for ablation, or up to a total of three cubic centimeters, uh, performed biopsies and scans. And here's just an example of how we were, how, how the device uh, pre-selects an area you circle in, in all three dimensions, the, the area of interest in the tumor, and then um, set up, uh, again, up to about 50% of the, uh, the active lesion, purposefully trying to leave some uh, viable tumor in that sort of shoulder uh, thermal zone that is thermally injured and therefore can ex antigen can be expressed. Uh, the dendritic cells can infiltrate, pick up antigen, uh, and deliver it to lymph nodes and deliver it to immune mediators. So uh, purposefully not a, a completely ablative regimen. A couple of examples just of how we were able to biopsy in the tumor and then in the periablated area. And the status on this trial, as I said, it's ongoing. We've completed treatment on five out of 12 patients. We just enrolled two more patients in the last week. Our median age, 56. They're very heavily pretreated patients. All have had visceral disease. Uh, two of the patients have had brain metastases. So of course, like many early phase trials, these are um, very heavily pretreated and, and um, complex patients. And we've purposely taken all receptor statuses. Since there's an existing hint that triple negative breast cancer may be immunogenic, but estrogen receptor positive breast cancer has really been a tough egg to crack, so we wanted to purposefully look and see what are the immunologic uh, outcomes of treating ER positive breast cancer patients. So here's my one preliminary bit of data um, from the immunologic standpoint. Uh, 
These are images from our biopsies performed at day zero, day 22 in the ablated cavity, and then day 22 in the periablative zone, so in that sort of shoulder area where there's been thermal damage but without complete liquefactive necrosis. You can see for the CD8s there uh, at the periablated area that there's a clear increase in the amount of CD8 infiltrate in the periablated area without an accompanying increase in FOXP3 regulatory cells. We think this is probably a good sign. We think that uh, these uh, CD8 T cells uh, are, are active T cells that are recognizing tumor antigen. Um, we are also seeing, as was predicted, an increase in pdl one positive cells uh, in that infiltrate. So this is encouraging preliminary uh, immunohistochemistry. We've got uh, all of the rest of the uh, immunologic analysis ongoing, and as I said, there's uh, several more patients to present at our next update of this data. Safety, of course, always has to be addressed. So far, we've had no adverse safety signals to report. There's been some mild uh, ablation site pain, some fatigue's been reported, and some nausea. Again, these are heavily pretreated patients. Um, one patient reported a little bit of shortness of breath, uh, but I'm not totally convinced that was related to the ultrasound procedure. Um, so far, by the strict uh, rhesus criteria, we haven't had a complete or a partial response in the distant disease, but it is still early. There's a hint that a couple of patients going on to future therapies have had really dramatically good response on future therapies. That's something that other folks in the immunology world have seen, that the next therapy after your uh, effective immunotherapy can be highly effective and durable. So some encouraging um, uh, endpoints already, and lots of thanks to all the team uh, from UVA, uh, folks at Ultrasound Foundation, Thorac, Leon, Merck, um, and our supporting grants. And with that, I'll take questions. Thank you. Yes. Do you plan to do any genomic profiling? Yes, yes. Uh, it's ongoing. I don't have any results to show you just yet. Maybe just a question on the, on the timing. You are uh, post ablation when uh, your histology, what, how, what was the timing of that and what is, will be the timing of any uh, blood samples that you will take off? Yeah, so one week after one the week after. ablation. And then of course we also have uh, biopsy at day 64, so uh, a few weeks later. So there is a very important interest in looking at the timing of immune yeah, uh, yeah. maturation because the early immune response is clearly different from the late yes, uh, immune yes. response. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions? Then, okay. Thanks. But okay.